All right, Kathy Durden, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm great. So the official brains behind the organization. T- talk to me. I like to say that. Yeah, yeah. That's so what I tell everybody that all <laughs> but um yeah, you know, I probably give Dave a little advice that he doesn't need. No, he's doing great. I'm just here to you know what it is? I'm good for um he likes to run things by me that he wants to tell everybody else and then mm. he calms down before he actually says it to everybody else. So that's what I'm for. Yeah. You're a sounding board, that's good. Yeah, but, yeah. but what about you? You're going to be a mess this week. So it's it's uh, it's going to be another Cal, Texas head-to-head showdown, it looks like, right? I think so, yeah. You know, I've got everybody asking me, like, are you ready? And I've got kind of two answers, like the what I'm supposed to say. Like, yeah, I'm excited to watch you guys swim. And, you know, I can't, can't wait to turn on the pod, you know, turn on the live stream. And then the real answer is, like, I feel like I want to throw up and I'm ready for Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, those are my two answers. But yeah, I'm excited. I mean – for the people that don't right. know you, you are kind of like a swim nerd. That's why I'm wearing the shirt. Like you, you're, you're a real swim nerd. Like you, you are swimming every race. You're crunching numbers. You're oh, yeah. and you're, you're doing the whole thing, right? Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yep. Definitely. I mean, I, I look at it like, you, you know, the emotion of like a win, you know, is great uh, in an event, but you know, I look at it more like how many guys do we have in finals, how many guys do we have in consoles, that kind of thing. So um, when we're at the meet, I typically, you know, the alumni section kind of, you know, it's different this year, but when we're at the meet, as soon as the last person touches in the last heat of prelims, they all kind of look to me and I'm like, we have two up, two down, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> and, you know, so I'm, I give them kind of the, the numbers with that, but it's good. How good is this Cal team this year? You think just from, from previous teams, you know, how, how balanced are they this year? I mean, they're experience heavy, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. Our senior class is, has done the deal, right? And um, I think they're experience heavy, which is going to help. And then they're just itching to race. I mean, mm-hmm. this, you know, and we're, certainly Cal is not the only one, but, you know, last year being what it was, it just like, I think it's pretty obvious that Cal kind of Pac-12 is never really the focus. And so, Last year after Pac-12, it was kind of like, okay, let's get to the next year. And then it was like, phew, everything was shut down. So um, I think Cal has a lot of guys that are just ready to shave, honestly. I mean, yeah. um, and ready to get going and and want to kind of be back in that environment again. Yeah, I was looking at some footage from Pac-12s and while they swam really fast, it looked like they had more in the tank and it looked like Dave was holding them back. I hope so. I yeah. hope so. I mean, there's so many variables. You know how it is. I mean, yeah there's so many variables that go into a fast swim and it's yep. just like, you can say like, I mean, a lot of people, the, the can line is like, Oh, we're unshaved. We're untapered. Like, what does that even mean? Right. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's, so, it's such a spectrum of where you are in your preparation. And, um, but the goal is always to swim fast at pack 12 and swim faster at NC two A's. And that's always the goal. So, well, you know what it's like when you have a team that's good and, and contending, you have your major players and you have guys that can mm-hmm. handle pressure and you have guys you just know are going to be there and they're going to, they're going to perform. So like for Cal, yeah. for the people that don't know the team this year, as well as you do, give us a couple mm-hmm. of the players, the guys that are going to be swimming multiple events, multiple finals, you know, various relays. Sure. Who, who are those guys? Sure. I mean, of course, you've got, you know, your sprint guys. So you've got Ryan Hoffers, probably a big one. Um, he's a senior this year for us and for us, like I'm on the team. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so he's a senior. He's going to be a workhorse uh, this week for sure with three individual events. He'll do a 50, 100, 100 fly, and yeah. then, you know, four relays. So that's a big one. And then you've got a guy like Trenton Julian who really, I mean, mm. it's been so fun to watch him, you know, yeah. and just uh, – when he, it's funny when he signed, I mean, I was kind of starstruck because Christine Quantz, his mom, mm. uh, and of course his dad, Jeff Julian is a big swim guy too, but I, I was like, oh my gosh, Christine Quantz is going to be in our parents <laughs> section. And so, you know, Trenton kind of came in quietly his first year and, and did well, made the meet and um, I think maybe scored bottoms. And it's just to see him evolve into really a cornerstone of this team. I mean, he's just a super stud now. So um, definitely he's going to be a three event guy, you know, relay workhorse again. Um, and then you got, you know, you got specialty guys like Reese Whitley, of course, you know, who's mm. um, we're counting on him for big points and breaststroke. And then, you know, and then you've got these guys, Sean Bishop, who quietly is like 
three could be three of the A finals. You know, you hope. So you know, you, you don't want to put all this pressure on these guys, but you've got a lot. And then you've got Hugo Gonzalez. You know, transfer that's kind yeah. of gone through all this rigmarole and just again another guy that just he wants to race at this highest level and get back to it. So Hugo's a star. I mean, that was a good pickup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah. Get him. I know that. What about <laughs> this? One, yeah. What about this? Uh, there's some. There's word on the street about this Swedish Ooh. sprinter. Like, who's this guy? Oh, I like word on the street. Uh, Bjorn. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Um, you know, I'm not at practice day in and day out, but um, he's he's in there with Hoff and mm. Nathan and, you know, doing his deal. And and he's young. And you know how it is before you know kind of what it's about. It's like, I'm just going to go swim fast. So uh, I think yeah. he's in a good spot as well. Is it going to be tough for you this year, not being in the in the section, cheering, leading, leading the cheers, leading the crowd? Is yeah, is that, it's going to be yeah. different, right? It's it's different. Yeah, I mean, we've got kind of some Zoom calls going on, some watch parties and stuff like that. So, but it's not the same. You know, it's not the same. Um, we're we're trying to do actually like a a fifteen minute or twenty minute debrief after finals with Dave on Zoom. So I think our alumni will be kind of into that. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. Um. So they'll be into that, but it's like it's not the same. And I just want to do what I can. I mean, I, my phone blows up, you know, so that's kind of the best I can do is text people and get excited, but it's so different. I mean, I've been at every meet, I think I've missed two NC2As since 2002, you know, men's meet. So, and one of them, cause my daughter was six years, six days old. So. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. You, can, you, you got an excuse on that one. So what's, yeah, uh, yeah. what's Dave like today? What's, what's he, what's he doing today? What's he like today? You know, he's been pretty chill. Um, I would say, you know, Dave always gives off the appearance that he's cool <laughs> and calm and collected, but it's like any coach, you know, at the end of the day, you know how it is the first session, you know, you've got mm -hmm. the interview relay tonight. And then, I mean, today is just one event, but it really gets things going. And we always talk about like, I think every coach on the deck, on the side of the deck, right before the interview relay is going to dive in. I think you know, and you're lying if yeah. you're not, if you're not like this, but every coach is like, I hope this worked. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and I just think, you know, so I think, uh, but he's confident. I mean, I, you know, he feels like they know what they're doing. And again, the experience kind of comes in, especially in this environment of like, it's so different. There's no fans. You've got to kind of drum up your own energy and that kind of thing. And, um, I think they're going to do great. Did you guys watch the women's meet last week and, and learn anything from that? Um, I mean, I wasn't with Dave a whole lot just because um, the timing of it, right? It was like three right. o'clock. Uh, so he was still at practice and that kind of thing. So he wasn't able to watch a lot of it, but he definitely, um, I think, communicated a little bit with Terry of just knowing what was like the seating and the mm. flow and stuff like that. But then they got there pretty early this week to get that going and try to figure it out and everything like that. But I watched the women's meet and it's, you know, it's totally different watching a meet when, of course, you know, I'm sitting there cheering on Cal and I want them to kill it and you know they're my favorite and everything like that but it's just i don't have that personal like i really want them to some past you know yeah. so it's just less stressful and it's fun to watch as a fan for sure well listen you've seen the psych sheet you've been running some preliminary numbers how, how close is this meet really on paper i mean i think cal's got a good shot to move up you know i mean texas is good every year so it's just like yeah. they're gonna they're going to be in it. And there's other teams that have like, you know, I mean, going 18 and the 50 now is like dime a dozen. It's like, right. Yeah, and yeah. so it's like, there's other teams sprinkled in. That's, you know, are definitely going to help break some things up. And I think it's going to be close. I mean, I think Cal and Texas have a history of something better than the psych sheet. Um, yeah. So I don't think the psych sheet, and then, you know, you throw in diving, which is always another factor. And, I think if you look at diving, not as a big, scary monster, but if you break it down and say, okay, like what can Texas do in diving? And then can we offset any of that and make it a swim meet? You know, I don't know. We'll see. So yeah. that's the goal, right? Yeah, that's the goal. Um, you know, when I was, when, when we were swimming on the team together at Auburn, uh, there was kind of like, there was a rivalry. There was, there was kind of a, a hatred towards Texas because they were good then. And uh, is, mm -hmm. is there, is there that feeling amongst the, the Texas Cal teams now, or is it a kind of a mutual respect? Oh, it's definitely a mutual respect for sure. I mean, these guys are on national teams together and stuff yeah. like that. Right. And yeah. um, I mean, I 
don't love Texas. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, the competitor in me is yeah. like, oh, but these guys are like, at the time, it's like, yes, we want to beat them. But I mean, I think of one of the, you know, most well-known Texas guys, Will Lacone, is friends with all the guys on the Cal team. And they have some super all around great guys on their team. And I think like, you know, when you're on national teams and hopefully Olympic teams with those guys, you come together and really get to know them outside of the rivalry. And I think that's good. What about you in in, in terms of your interaction with Dave personally? Like, what are you going to do this week? Are you texting him during the the meet or are you just leaving him alone and then talking to him? Yeah. I leave him alone for sure. I mean, um, I kind of wait for him. It's the same thing when I'm there. I usually stay with him. And the last thing he wants to talk about is swimming at the end of the session. You know, I'm kind of like, what about this? What about this? What about this? So I've learned over the years to like dial it back and like let him lead those conversations just because, I mean, his mind is going in a million different directions. And again, it just kind of come back, comes back to the sounding board thing. And, uh, but yeah, I'll wait for him to text me because you know how it is too after final sessions, you're, you got to get guys on the table. You got to get guys food and get out of there. And so I just know logistically how it works too. And you got to kind of wait till he's in his hotel room, settled down, probably having a glass of wine and, <laughs> and then he'll text me and we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, I appreciate your insights. It's been good yeah. to catch up and uh, it'll be a fun meet, no doubt. And um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get this out here today. And I spoke to um someone from texas last night so i yeah. won't reveal you can watch that and uh and this will get yeah. out and uh, it's just going to be a great meet so listen uh, good luck to you enjoy the meet good luck to dave and uh good luck to the team all right appreciate it thanks brett yes. take care kathy bye all right bye nate's come out with another awesome tool for the swimming community it's called swim nerd live and it allows the data and times from your actual scoreboard to be broadcast and viewed in real time on any smart TV, phone, or other device. It has all the information you're looking for, event, heat, lane, name of swimmer, times and places. One click on any device and they're watching your swim meet live in real time. Go to swimpractice.com to learn more. Okay. On here with Maxim Rooney. How you doing, mate? Doing great. Just got out of practice, finished up an assignment, joined you for the call. Excited. It's going to be a good week. A super exciting week. It is, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, this Cal-Texas rivalry has been going head-to-head for, you know, close to 10 years straight now, and, and you've been part of it. What, what's it like, man, on the inside? Um, well, I can only speak on last year because I was on the team last year as I'm a post-grad now. But last year, like when you come to Texas, there's one thing on your mind and it's to win a national championship. And, you know, last year with everything cut short, we were we were very excited. We were going in confident because, again, you want to go into the meet thinking that you have a chance to win and that you can win based on your ability if you execute the right way. And I, and I think that's that's the way um, they've approached it the exact same way this year. And I'm super excited because I, I believe the guys um, – They've been, they put the work in to be there and they're going to be ready at the right time. Um, I mean, we talk about, you know, Eddie's main quote is take care of each other. I mean, take care of yourself, take care of each other and the rest will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. And ultimately like these last two weeks, it's been great seeing kind of the attitude on deck, um, really observing the way the guys are holding themselves and taking care, obviously taking care of their bodies because they're tapering, but also take care of each other's minds. Like, making sure, you know, they're ready to go to battle because it is absolutely going to be a battle with Cal this week. Yeah, man, that's, that's good stuff. I like that because, you know, I'm super interested in that. Like what's the last two weeks like being on a Texas team where look, everybody knows it's, it's really a two horse race. You know, you got your players at Texas, you got your players at Cal and, and they've been going head to head. I mean, are the, are the Texas guys talking about Cal or, you know, what's the atmosphere like? Again, so I think like, I mean, I can only speak about like when I was on the team, when, when I was on the team, my senior year, I remember we sat down in August, September area. And we said, look, this is what we need to do to win this year. This is how many points. And so, you know, these last couple of weeks, I don't necessarily think they're getting too into the logistics about it, but it is very much like, you know, stay in your lane, eyes on the prize, get your hand on the wall first, do everything you can to rest the legs. Now, you know, obviously they're taking care of their bodies, they're recovering well. Um, and I mean, at the end of the day, 
once you get up on the blocks, it's, it doesn't matter what the last week, what the last month, what the last year has been, regardless of the pandemic and all the obstacles, it's hammer time. They're going to, they're going to throw down. And, and I believe they're ready to do that. What about the legend Eddie Reese, man? What's he like in the, in the last few days before they leave for NCAAs? What's he, what's his, um, you know, uh, what's his, how does he come onto the deck? How does he interact with the guys? That sort of thing. I mean, he's, he's same, same Eddie throughout the year, very calm. Um, he's got a great eye for detail. And that's one of the things like, obviously the last three weeks, you don't want to be changing too many things. So he's just been, I mean, we're, we're finding maybe a little better flip turn here. We're leaning a little bit more forward on the start. So it's just, just the small details that he really has a knack to correct. And, um, other than that, just, like I said, we're trying to keep our, our guys heads and hearts in the right place. Cause I mean, the NCAA meet it's four days, it's, it's hard. You got to be in it mentally. And obviously your body has to be ready to go. So they got to be tip top shape and firing on all cylinders. So I, I would say he hasn't changed too much, still super positive, happy guy. And um, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to see them this week and I'll observe how he is with them. Tell me this. I read somewhere where Texas overqualified something, something ridiculous, like 25, 26 yeah, men or something. Yeah. yeah. Something crazy. So what well, you, you know, these guys personally, what's it like, you know, not being picked up to go to the NCA meet? Yeah. I mean, so like I've observed it and of course, like you, you want to be on the team that's there at the meet and everything, but they, they understand that, you know, so I remember last year being on the team and there were, I think uh, 24 qualified mm. and there are again people who had to get cut and there there's an understanding that's like your victory is my victory you know and that's where the team is it is very much a team and I, I i could say like uh some of my training partners next week like this week when mm -hmm. they perform it's going to be like i remember a set that we did together that helps us both get better and so their success is my success and i'm going to rejoice for them so what about you now as, as an alum and kind of sitting on the sidelines, how are you going to interact with the guys this week? You know, are, are you going to be sending them text messages, phone calls, or do you just leave them alone? Well, so it's actually funny you say that because I talked with my, my buddy last week. Um, I'm for the sake, I'm just, uh, I'm going to hold the names just cause <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't want them to think too much, but I told them, I was like, you know, I love you, man. And I'm going to give you as much space as you know. I know we're probably going to get bombarded with messages from other people, but I'm not going to do that because I want you to stay on, off your phone, stay focused, do everything you can. Cause um, ultimately at the end of the day, like I have a really good relationship with him and as much as the other guys and we, we keep each other honest. And so I told him, it's like, look, I know you're going to do what you got to do. If you need anything at all, feel free. I will be on my phone for you at the ready. And uh, I'm obviously going to watch your races. So if you need a little something else, um, I'm there for you. So just kind of being available. I like, I like that word being available for him Yeah. and my team when they're, when they're needed. Tell me about the players, you know, the, the, the studs. I mean, you were a stud, yeah. you, you knew you Thanks. wanted, you wanted to carry the load, you know, you're, you're not afraid of that. So this team has those players, these, these guys T talk to me about a couple of those guys that are going to carry the load this week. Absolutely. I mean, okay. So I'm trying to, I was trying to see if I'm, I'm pretty sure I know the whole team right now. I'm so at Carson Foster, Jake Foster, Drew Kibler, Kobe Carosa, Peter Larson, JT Larson, uh, Casper Corbeau, Alvin Jang, Chris Staka, David Johnson. Uh, we bring in four divers uh, wow. for, I think, the two spots. Uh, that's Brennan, McC Brennan McCour, um, Noah Dupair, Jordan Wendell, uh, Andrew Harness. Um, I feel so bad. Okay, Braden Vines. Um, I hate missing names. Daniel Kruger. Um, but I can honestly say that it, it's going to be up to, I mean, it, all of them, they have great potential. And what I mean by, I actually, I want to change the word potential because they've, I think they've upped it this week. They have great capacity. They have to have a great capacity for excellence this week. Mm -hmm. And, uh, because I've seen them day in, day out, do it. Um, and again, what, one of the things that we talked about kind of last week going into our meet, like, uh, we had a, a meeting from, and just kind of sharing some wisdom about what the meet is like for the newcomers. And I was like, look, when you come to Texas, it's, it's every day. And we, they throw it on the line every day. Um, you know, from our Tuesday, Friday fast practices. I mean, you've guys seen the Eddie Reese invite. Um, it's, it's every day. And that's, that's the excellence they hold. And I'm, I'm excited to, 
see them prove it to themselves that this is the level that they're going to be at fighting for that national championship. What do you think Eddie's going to say to them right before the meet starts? What's the, what's the last words that Eddie's going to say to the team in the, in the, in the final team meeting before they go to the pool on the first night? I, uh, I would imagine Eddie saying, uh, well, okay. So when I was on the team in 2019, my first race uh, at the Minnesota invite was the eight free relay. And I let off the two free <laughs> and the first, like the last thing he said to me before I stepped on the block, he's like, just don't take it out too hard. <laughs> and he's like, I told him, he, he was like, Maxime, don't go out 43. And I proceeded to go out 43. Cause I like <laughs> trusted my body. And like, I knew like kind of where I was at with my rest. And I was like, okay, I can go out that. So I'd imagine Eddie cracking a joke, something like that, knowing that we have that capacity to go that fast. And he's going to be happily uh, surprised, like happily surprised when we, we, they go that fast. And um, on a, on a logistic side, I would just say uh, just, I think it's going to be about having fun, taking care of each other. They have, they have a great team. And I mean that in the cohesiveness, like they're all, very close. And, uh, I, I think it's going to be a great team meet for them. Um, and I, I'm, I'm particularly most excited for the relays, um, because I think that's where like they they should excel. And mm-hmm. it's going to be, it's going to be fun to watch the throwdowns with obviously Cal as a factor, but also Louisville in the medley relay. I mean, Florida, um, in the, the two free relay. So it, it's going to be, it's going to be fun all around. It was going to be a lot of fuss. I mean, listen, when, when we first won the national title back in 97 on the Auburn team, we, we dyed our hair blonde. Did Texas have any, oh, yeah. any, any tradition that you guys go into each year that you do the same thing each year? Uh, not for NCAAs. Um, I mean, I know that tradition, uh, like if you, you win an individual national title or a relay or the team, then you have the, I'll say you have the right uh, to get the Longhorns tatted on. Uh, I, Traditionally, it was, um, I, think, I don't know. So, so a lot of people get it on their rib cage. Right. Um, and I, I mean, I know some people are going to be wanting to earn those this week. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, tell us maybe someone, a couple of people, you don't just focus on one, but are there a couple of guys that, you know, you could shine a light on that maybe don't get a lot of the spotlight that, that have been putting in the work, that have been doing some really good stuff over the past few months? Yeah, I'm so, let's see. Okay, my so my main I'll say my main training partners out of this group that are going because again like I go I balance from like I don't stay too much on the sprint side I'm not a distance oriented swimmer, um, but my main training partners are kind of in that mid distance group so I would say probably like Daniel Kruger Drew Kibler Carson Foster oh also Jake Sanum mm-hmm. uh, he he pushed me a really really great on one set I remember and he's just got a great mind and he's I think he he's definitely gonna be someone to watch because. Um, yeah, he's, he's a stud and um so those athletes I don't know, carson jake foster um those are my like main training buddies because again i don't go too down on the sprint side um but if i were i think i mean alvin and chris Daka, they have excellent underwaters and you know that they're gonna be a factor because they're they're gonna want to fight for it too so i mean we got we I, I was joking earlier with uh my coach um obviously why patrick and eddie and i was like Dude, we we got some we got some stone cold killers on the team right now. And I think they're going to, they're going to go for it. They're going to want it. Are they expecting yeah. this to be kind of a, a back and forward type thing where it comes down to the last day where, where it's like, even, in, even on the last morning, they got to walk in and they got to perform to win this meet. So I mean, uh, generally speaking, um, and this is from my experience. I, again, yeah. if, uh, if we already knew the outcome, the meet wouldn't have happened. Right. Yeah, yeah. So my, and the way that I look at it, NCAAs is a high momentum meet, Um, meaning you can either get it really fast and hold on, or you can, uh, you can lose it like that. And so I think across the board, they want to have a high level at each session. Uh, They know that it's a meet that's one in the mornings because of numbers that are placed in the finals. So they have to be there in the morning to get their spot. Uh, So I think it's a, they're not really looking at us like, okay, we should be ahead by this day or this session or this number, like this number, or our divers or our divers will help take care of us in this way. It's, it's really going to be about how can we maximize this session? We have this many numbers. How many, how, how many people can we get up? Because again, it, it is about, let's put those numbers in the A, let's put those numbers in the B, make every point count. 
Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be running numbers during the week? <laughs> uh, well, I'll be in school. So <laughs> yeah, you're going to be on your school. phone. I know what you're going to be doing. But, but I'll, I'll be checking, I'll be checking my boys splits. Um, I'll definitely be watching finals. I don't think I can watch prelims because of school, school time. Yeah. I mean, I might have it side stream. Don't tell my professors <laughs> uh, because I can split the screen, you know? So, but um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I'll definitely be watching. I mean, I might throw some calculations on the last day to see like yeah. where it's best scenario. But again, it's uh, you really don't know what's going to happen at this meet until the last session. And things like a DQ, these are far too like, I don't want to say they're, normal but that's very it's it's it that could that could swing a meet yeah. easily i mean yeah. so it's um they they know what they need to do uh they have a job and um i, I know they're gonna get it done so it's it's pretty cool to notice that nice is there a couple of events where where you feel like they're they're stacked like that that's their events where they've got numbers in those events any any ones particular um i honestly haven't even looked at the site sheet <laughs> so i i don't i know like what my my teammates are swimming so i don't know like where they measure up and that's kind of like i just don't really want to look at i like i if i were at the meet last year i didn't even want to look at the site sheet just because i'm not trying to think about like okay where do i rank up i just want my lane and i want the execution yeah. and uh and i think that's 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 a, a similar approach in their head they have a lane they're staying in their lane and they're going to execute their best. And, um, and they, they know that it's going to take their best in the morning to get to the night swim. So makes a lot of sense, man. Is there anybody, I mean, are we just being too presumptuous here? Is there anybody that can challenge Cal in Texas um, right now? So I would be, so when I saw, uh, so my old school, Florida at yep. SECs, they looked very sharp and I know that they have an incredible base yep. from their winter training to to be faster at this meet mm -hmm. um now again i think it's going to depend on like their heavy hitters also their relay status um and so it's it, it uh it, honestly i i think they definitely have a i would say top three um yeah. because again one of the things like i talked about um with like some of my buddies and teams in general is, is what's unique about the ncaa meet is people are taking teams are taking points from other teams left and right. Mm. I remember, I think in, um, I think it was in 2018 at the Minnesota pool. Um, I was, I was kind of keeping track. And I think we got, I think we got fifth that year at mm -hmm. Florida. No, we got third, excuse me, at Florida. Mm -hmm. Yes. Third. And I, well, I actually don't even remember. Um, <laughs> but I, I was like, well, okay, Indiana's going to be up in this event, so they're going to take points away from Texas, you know? Right, right. Or Louisville is going to be up in this event. Oh, and I just saw, I think, on Swim Swam today or somewhere on, uh, I think I, somewhere on Instagram, but there's this 100 flyer out of Virginia Tech who could win the event. And so ultimately, that kind of moves someone down out of the A final into the B. So it's just kind of like, that, that's what's unique about this event is you have to be on, the whole team has to be on to really make that, collective effort towards the title so yeah, we'll see what happens yeah tell me this how does a player like you how does one a major player manage the meet you know you got to be up in the morning you got to be swimming fast and then you got to somehow come back and swim faster at night and then you swim multiple events it's crammed into three and a half days how do you manage that yeah so i think i mean especially for some of our guys they're gonna have probably two to three events per session depend uh luckily this year because of covid protocols relays are timed finals am oh, i right okay. right yeah i think, I think you're that's right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah so so really in the morning they can focus like on a huge effort get into finals get into the right final mm. and and then focus on the double at night so like if i were swimming i actually don't even really know the, <laughs> that order anymore <laughs> so i haven't been swimming in it but on like i think the full day two i would i was gonna do i think last year 100 fly and yeah. um maybe both relays 200 free maybe yeah do yeah um, both relays yeah, yeah i think for sure. yeah i think so i was like okay 100 fly and actually yeah okay so i, I don't even remember but 100 fly and then another relay effort i yeah. know so i have two efforts so, so it's i mean my main thought is okay how, how am i going to maximize both swims okay proper recovery right proper liquids got to rehydrate 
got to stay off my legs, maybe get a little shake out on the massage table. And these are things that like, I think all the elite athletes know that they're going to do. And again, it's about what, what's best, uh, what, what's best works for that. What, what, what works for them. So they're going to know that by the championship meet. Um, it's not the time to kind of take risks or be like, Oh, maybe I need to go a little harder and warm up. They already have that all locked down. So this meet is really about the finalization of all the work that they've done all season to fine tune their routines and execution of the races to perform their best. What about if you have a bad swim, let's say it doesn't go to plan. How do you put that behind you that, that night, you know, and, and instead of sleeping on it all night, how do you, how do you just put it behind you and come back the next day and, and be better? I think that's a great question. And I'm actually going to turn it back to kind of what I said earlier about the momentum shift, you know? And so like, if you have a bad swim at this meet, it could absolutely change the momentum for the rest of the meet. So how do you minimize that effect? How do you minimize the impact on the momentum on yourself Mm -hmm. and on your team? And I think that that ultimately comes down to what's going on up here is you have to ask yourself, okay, did I do the work? What, what, what actually first you ask, okay, what happened? where I didn't get that outcome that I wanted. And then that goes to, did I do the work? And if it's a yes, then it's like, put your head back in the game and get to the next race. Yeah. Good advice. I like that. Who's the team guy this year. Who's the guy that's going to walk around lifting people up and just um, getting people in the right headspace and picking them up if they're down or, you know, keeping them calm. Who's that guy? Um, short answer. All of them. Um, like uh, I'd like to shout out specifically, like actually our coaching staff. Yeah. Um, I think it's a unique situation again at the pool because of COVID. So they, I think they have two coaches on like in the stands, watching the, watching the race. And then one coach at the warm up pool. Oh. Um, but I can tell you Eddie and Wyatt and, and coach Patrick, he's our, our volunteer assistant coach. They're, they're going to be doing all the right things. They know each athlete individually, how to get them in the right place. Um, and again, I think that just is a testament of why Texas is great because they can get their athletes ready at the right time. I love it, man. Well, listen, I appreciate it. this. has been great insight. Just wanted to get your thoughts on this meet. It's going to be a killer and can't wait to watch it. I appreciate your time today, man. Thanks, Maxine. Thanks for talking with me. It's going to be right. fun. See you, buddy. Take care. Cool. Later, Brett. See ya.